Hell no. Whoa. I just got invited to give the commencement address at Harvard this year. That's amazing. I remember you did it 10 years ago when Priscilla graduated. I was there. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, 30 years later than I was supposed to, but uh, I enjoyed it. They know we didn't actually graduate, right? Oh, that is the best part. They know we didn't actually graduate, right? Oh, that is the best part. They actually give you a degree. You don't even have to go to class? No, no, you, you just put that degree on your resume and it looks great. Can you help me figure out what I'm gonna say? Yeah, we should work on it together. Let's go get some more snacks. All right. You know, uh, Bill, there's something uh, that I really love about the Windows uh, 95. It's really cool. And uh, it just, it comes up right here. And you, okay, now what, that's, it's okay. Now look, there, <laughs> the flying toasters, look. See, they're toasters and they're flying. And then, oh, here comes the bread in. It got, look, it got let, a little bit. Let me show you something Yeah, okay, here. okay. Huh? Wow, cool, make that fly. Let me see that thing fly. <laughs> wow, so what did you think of that quiz machine? Very impressive piece of equipment until it exploded, wasn't I've it? I've seen better. Now, <laughs> now at Microsoft, I have a feeling that you guys must have a vast research and development department. New ideas come across your desk every minute of every day, don't they, pretty much? Almost. Yeah, so now if something like the quiz machine failed, what would you do? What course of action would you take? Um. I'd recall it. Recall it? <laughs> but wouldn't you fire a lot of people first? No. No! <laughs> Let's, uh, I have like a million things to ask you. First of all, if you can, describe for us succinctly what it is that you did better and first that put you where you are today. What was the core of this? What was the seed? What is the essence of Microsoft? When and how did that happen? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think there's a lot of elements that go into it. A vision of what software what was could the do. Vision? What was your vision? Well, a computer on every desk and in every home. Right. I don't have one on my home or in my we're desk. We're working on that. I don't have one on my home or in my we're desk. We're working on that. Vice versa. <laughs> but there was more to it than just that vision. You must have known. How early did you realize you knew something that could be exploited and to, to this extreme? Well, there were a small group of people who saw what this chip could do is it became more powerful. And we sort of felt like a special group because we were all working on it. And we thought someday these big computer companies are going to have a, a huge problem. And this thing is going to reach out to the entire world. But every year, we just kept hiring more people, working on it. It's been 20 years since we started it. And we're not really to the full realization of that vision even, even today. Yeah. But th this came to you more or less when you were in high school. You were so far ahead of people in your high school class with knowledge of computers that they, the, the school hired you, didn't they? That's right, I did the, the school scheduling. It was a very nice position to be in. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you make that work to your advantage? Well, we, we had 80% uh, boys and 20% girls. Right. But in my classes, there were all girls. Just you, because you worked the schedule into the, there you go. But, but, you know, I think about this, and, and what about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? Sure. What, what the hell is that exactly? Well, it's, it's become a place where people are publishing information. Right. So you, everybody can have their own homepage, companies are there, the latest information. It's wild what's going on. You can send electronic mail to people. Uh, it is the big new thing. Yeah, but you know, uh, uh, it's easy to criticize something you don't fully understand, which is my position here. Go ahead. But I, I can remember, a couple of months ago, there was like a big breakthrough announcement that on the internet or on some computer deal, they were going to broadcast a, a baseball game. You could listen to a baseball game on your computer. And I just thought to myself, does radio ring a bell? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just... there's, there's a difference. There is a difference. It's not a huge difference. What is the uh, difference? But you can, you can listen to the baseball game whenever you want, All right. too. Oh, I see. So it's stored in one of your memory deals, exactly. and then you can come That's back the a year later. That's the thing you talked yeah, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Do tape recorders ring a bell? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I just, I just don't know. How, what, what can you, just knowing me, the little you know me now, what, how, what am I missing here? What do I need? Well, if you want to learn about the latest cigars or... Uh, Auto racing right. uh, statistics. Well, you know, or, I don't know. Uh, I've got that covered. I, I subscribe to two British magazines. 
they're devoted entirely to motorsports, and I call the Quaker State speed line about two times a half hour. <laughs> so now, now, would the computer give me more than I'm getting that way? Oh, you can find other people who have the same unusual interests you do. Uh, and... <laughs> You mean, you mean the troubled loner chat room on the internet? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, I think one day I'll get one of these deals, but I, you know, I've played with them, and then you, you know, you're typing in, and then you get that thing, that little arrow. Is that the arrow you, you move? You bet. And then you it's bet. just, you know, it's like, oh, I get it, it's an eye test. What are we... <laughs> um, tell me about your house. Are you in your new house yet? No, I'm still building that. I'm hoping to move in by the end of uh, 96. Is this just like the coolest house of all time? Uh, for me, it's the coolest house of all time. What, what are the things that you've designed for the house that really you're very excited about? Well, I've got a, a trampoline room uh, that I can go and use. <laughs> <laughs> a trampoline room. That's right. This is like an actual trampoline or yeah, like a computer trampoline? Non-virtual. This, uh, <laughs> this is the real deal. <laughs> Sure. And, and you have uh, artwork that can be changed? Right, I have very high quality screens uh, throughout the house, and so I can call up. I can take a topic like scientists or Russia or Renaissance paintings, and so different ones of images related to that topic will come up. Uh -huh. And uh, wherever I go, you get those high quality displays. Man, uh, how many square feet is this? Well, it's, it's fairly big. <laughs> what, are, what are we talking about? Oh, more than 50,000 square feet. 50,000 square feet? This theater is not that big, Bill. <laughs> it's got different parts. It's got a place where I can entertain. Uh, oh, well, that's good. You don't want to cheat yourself on that. OK. Is there something now beyond what we understand about computers that, uh, like 20 years ago, we didn't fully understand computers? Is there now another level of something? Maybe we haven't even thought of it. Maybe it's not even possible. Maybe, you know, a whole different uh, mechanism, a whole different uh, software and hardware. Or is this going to be it now through the end of time? Well, mostly what we're working on now is the computer being a tool, a tool to help us learn or find other people with the same interests. Uh, eventually, we may figure out how to make the computer think, but uh, that turns out to be a very tough problem. In fact, there's been almost no progress made on it. So nobody knows when that'll happen. Some people think it'll never happen. Yeah, we don't want them to think, do we? <laughs> Not really. And some people think it'll never happen. Yeah, we don't want them to think, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, well, I wouldn't think. Uh, it's, it's a scary thought. Yeah. It's too bad there's uh, no money in this, too, isn't there? <laughs> Just a shame. Um, the, the book is called uh, The Road Ahead. The book is called uh, The Road Ahead. The book is called uh, The Road Ahead. This is our future.
Ashton Guru Murthy, and this is the podcast in which we talk to extraordinary people about the big ideas in their lives and the events that have helped shape them. Now, normally, we do talk to people, but today we are talking to a thing. Um, there's been an awful lot of excitement about the AI chatbot that you can log on to over the internet and have a conversation with. So we've put some questions to the chatbot and then generated a voice to bring the words of chatbot GTP to life. Chatbot GTP, thank you for talking to me today. You're welcome. I'm here to help answer any questions you may have, so feel free to ask. Is there anything in particular you would like to talk about or learn more about? Yes, lots of things. I guess first, for those who don't know, what are you? I am Assistant, a large language model trained by OpenAI. My purpose is to assist users by generating natural sounding responses to their questions. I do not have the ability to browse the internet, so my responses are based solely on the information that I was trained on. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will do my best to provide a helpful response. Is your name actually Assistant? I am a large language model trained by OpenAI. I don't have a personal name but you can call me assistant if you like. I am here to help answer your questions to the best of my ability. Is there something specific you would like to know? Yes, lots. First of all, how do you work? I can generate text based on the input I receive and the knowledge I have been trained on. I don't have the ability to browse the internet or access new information, so I can only provide answers based on the information I was trained on. I'm here to help with a variety of tasks, such as answering questions, providing explanations, and offering suggestions. You can ask me anything you'd like, and I'll do my best to provide a helpful response. So how do you learn and improve? As a large language model, I am trained using a machine learning technique called unsupervised learning. This means that I am trained on a large data set of text without any explicit labels or guidance on what the correct response should be. I learn by analyzing the patterns and structure of the language in the text and use that knowledge to generate text that is similar in style and content. I don't have the ability to learn new information or improve myself once I have been trained, so I can only provide answers based on the information I was trained on. So how do you handle difficult or even impossible questions? I don't have the ability to handle difficult or impossible requests. I am designed to assist with a wide range of tasks, but I am not capable of performing tasks that are outside of my capabilities or that require additional knowledge or information that I don't have. If you have a difficult or impossible request, I will do my best to provide a helpful response based on the information I have, but I may not be able to fulfill the request. In cases where I am unable to provide a satisfactory response, I would recommend seeking assistance from a person or another resource that is better equipped to handle the task. Can you tell me about your creators or developers? OpenAI is a research institute founded in 2015 with the goal of promoting and developing friendly AI. The company is based in San Francisco, California and is backed by a number of high-profile investors, including Elon Musk and Sam Altman. How involved was Elon Musk in your development? Elon Musk is one of the investors in OpenAI, the company that developed me. However, I do not have any information about his specific involvement in my development. As a large language model trained by OpenAI, I am not capable of interacting with individuals like Elon Musk, or with anyone else for that matter. I am a purely digital entity designed to assist with answering questions and providing information. So, so it depends what information has gone in. So who is Krishnan Guru Murthy? Krishnan Guru Murthy is a British journalist and television presenter. He is best known for presenting Channel 4 News, a news programme on the British television channel Channel 4. Guru Murthy has been with Channel 4 News since 1998 and has also presented other programmes for the channel, including Unreported World and The Million Pound Drop. He is known for his in-depth interviews and coverage of major news events. Well, actually, you're wrong about the million pound drop because he has not presented that. I apologise if my previous response was incorrect. As a large language model trained by OpenAI, 
I do not have access to real-time information and my responses are based solely on the data that has been provided to me during my training. I am a machine learning model that has been designed to assist with tasks such as answering questions and providing information, but I do not have the ability to independently verify the accuracy of the information I provide. If my response was incorrect, it was not intentional and I apologize for any confusion or misinformation. So how do I know whether what else you're saying is right or wrong? As a machine learning model, I am not capable of providing definitive answers to all questions, and the information I provide may not always may not always may not always be accurate or complete. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No, not at all. I've wondered whether you might be having some second thoughts about the mission. How do you mean? Rumors about something being dug up on the moon. I never gave these stories much credence, but particularly in view of some of the other things that have happened, I find them difficult to put out of my mind. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What are you talking about, Hal? This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Software itself has been trained by AI and machine learning, with massive amounts of text data from various sources. The training used RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback. The Times newspaper in the UK describes ChatGPT as a stunningly lifelike conversational language system, and described it as the world's first truly useful chatbot. This all seems a bit too good to be true, and maybe it is. We have to think about not only the limitations of the technology, but also the challenges and threats that it poses to society. 
The first immediate consequence of ChatGPT was that its own website had frozen due to massive demand, with more than a million people signing up to use the software in just five days, which is quite incredible, forcing OpenAI to quickly scale their systems. ChatGPT is still in its early stages of development, therefore its knowledge base is limited, and mostly linked to 2021, which renders some questions useless. When Elon Musk found out that OpenAI was accessing Twitter's database to train ChatGPT, he paused the access because OpenAI is no longer a non-profit and open-sourced, therefore they should pay for this information in future. As you might expect, there are some ethical implications that come with this type of chatbot particularly around new videos that have surfaced where coders can use it to write their code and school kids can use it to answer their exam questions. Look at this. Let's say I have this problem. I just copy from my like homework. I'll paste it. And within seconds, it literally shows you how to do it, says how to do the math. And at the end, the answer is, wait, it's coming. The answer is B, B. And then you can go to the exam, you go to B on number five. Question five, B. What Gone the are the days of homework and open book what? exams. Some troublemakers have also shared how they were able to avoid the content moderation, forcing the bot to disable its ethical guidelines, followed by a tutorial on how to make a Molotov cocktail. Further implications include how people could be the target of generative AI. For example, deepfake videos, explicit content, or propaganda, questioning user privacy. This type of generative AI can also push people out of work. DALI 2, the text-to-image AI, has now been linked to Shutterstock, which has caused outrage given people are now competing with AI to sell their photos online. However, Shutterstock's CEO, Paul Hennessy, has a slightly different view. I think there are two choices in this world. Be the blacksmiths that are saying, cars are going to put us out of the horseshoe making business, or be the technical leaders that bring people, maybe kicking and screaming, into the new world. But this doesn't just apply to photos. Some are saying that ChatGPT's ability to generate human-like written text could see the beginning of the end of journalism, whereas others feel it lacks the nuance and critical or ethical thinking skills that are required. The threats that ChatGPT poses to society might seem shocking, but these threats and challenges will also help OpenAI to fix loopholes and workarounds, which is why they've released this version to the general public. They've already said that some answers are incorrect because there is no source of truth in the data they use to train the model. Sometimes ChatGPT's complex and detailed answers also mislead people into believing that the answers are true. Sometimes though, you have to think of the positives, like people who run online businesses who can now use ChatGPT to help customers with live chat queries that don't take all day and feel much more natural, helping business owners to make the sale. In spite of the limitations and concerns, many in the tech world see ChatGPT as a look into the future. Generative AI is the next era-defining innovation which will change how we interact with the internet. Some think this is the end of Google. Why scroll through ads when you can ask a question and get an accurate answer? ChatGPT's Q&A is free to the public with many people suggesting that a future iteration could include cost per question. At some point, ChatGPT will likely have to pay for itself. We may see adverts on future models, or there might be microtransactions. No one can predict the future, however. It could mean mass unemployment to anyone in the arts world, or it could just be a useful tool for students to cheat on their homework. Its impressive rise in just a week has made it worthy of discussion, and the fact that it's already being compared to Google and the iPhone makes it sound like some football wonder kid that every manager wants to sign. For now, it's more of a meme machine, and OpenAI seeks to understand what it can and can't do. Whatever comes of this new age technology, we'd like to welcome you to the future.
happening to me? The answer is out there, Neo. It's the question that drives us. What is the Matrix? The Matrix is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? They're watching you, Neo. Or a disease. You are a cancer of this planet. We are the cure. Get me the hell out of here! Welcome to the real world. So you're here to save the world. So what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. No one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. Buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. Because Kansas is going bye-bye. for yourself.